statistics analyzing the game of chuck a luck example get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics you're not required to but if you have access to this one note file we're currently in first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product. Because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. The OneNote presentation section 1850 Chuck a Luck example tab, looking at this from the perspective of understanding concepts related to probability, which we will later apply to the more broad category of statistics in general, games of chance such as chuck -a luck here being great tools to learn probability concepts because they were built just out of those probability concepts some people really like learning games of chance because they're games and they're fun some people don't like it so much because they don't like to imagine themselves in a casino or gambling and two they might say hey how do these concepts relate to the real world if i'm not in a gambling or casino situation which i don't plan to be in then Remember that because these games were built on directly probability concepts, they're basically probability distilled down to their essence. So they're great tools just to learn the concepts of probability, which we can then apply to many, many different areas, such as we will do later to areas of statistics. All right, so we're looking at a dice uh, type of game this time. So we're imagining ourselves in the casino or in a... In a uh, in a carnival or something and we're betting on the dice game so we talked about before a game of a roulette situation which although it looks a lot more complex is actually a bit easier because each of the different things that we can bet on with the roulette wheel can basically be uh, analyzed independently whereas with the dice game we have a situation where we're going to have three different dice you can imagine them being different colors we're going to say for our purposes red uh, orange and blue for the three different dice and we have different payouts for each uh, outcome or different outcomes for the different dice which is a little bit different than many of the things we saw with the roulette uh, type of wheel where you have one outcome that you can basically analyze either betting on one number or betting on red or black or even or odd and so on and so forth so we have to think about two things when we analyze the expected value, which is the thing that we want to know to see whether or not the game is fair or not. Remembering that if we're in a casino situation, there are two big categories of games we can think about. One is where there's a pot and you're betting against other players in the casino. That would be something like a poker game or if you're at a horse race or something like that. You're not really betting against the house you're betting against the other people and how does the house make money they just take a percentage of the winnings they take a percentage of the pot they take a percentage of the horse race before they give the money out to the winners of the horse race so you're basically just paying a fee for the service of putting on the horse race and running the numbers if you're talking about a betting against the house such as if you're in a blackjack situation the chuckle luck here or a roulette or a craps situation then how are they going to get paid well the the odds in the long term are not going to be favorable to you they're going to be favorable to the house in the long run so in the short run you would expect that you could win right but in the long run the longer that you play you expect that you're going to lose the house is going to make their money almost certainly if they have a full group of people playing because 
that means that they're playing basically on the long term as different people shuffle through playing the game for the casino, which means they can basically count or think about how much they're going to earn fairly systematically. So you might say, well, I don't ever want to do that. Well, you might say, but if you were on an investing situation, like you're invested in the stock market, it's the same concept, except that in the long term, you would expect to have a favorable probability. So you might lose in the short term, but you're expecting that you're more like the casino in that case, that in the long term, you can have some predictable returns is at least the hope. And then, of course, if you're playing against a friend, you would expect that you would want even odds, right? So each of them have their place, right? Uh, unfavorable odds, of course, you're going to be unfavorable if you're at like a charity or a casino. That's how you pay the charity or casino, right? You can see if they're dishonest or something and you think that's manipulative, that's another thing, but that's how it's going to work. And then you would want favorable odds if you're investing, of course, or something like that. And you would want even odds if you're playing against a friend and you're just having fun playing some kind of game that has chance related to it. In this game, we've got the three dice uh, that, and then the other thing that we have to think about is the payout. So the two things to see if it's fair or not will be the odds of the outcome and then the payout. Now, the thing that's tricky here is that we don't just win with one particular outcome. We could win if any of our number comes up. So say we choose a four, we throw three dice. Well, you can win multiple different ways. You can have any of those dice could come up with a four and you have one four. Well, then you win. What's the payout? You'd get one to one payout if that happens. Uh, what if you get two fours? If you get two fours, then they actually pay you two to one. So if you put one dollar down, one chip down that represents a dollar, they put another chip on top of it. You take the two chips back. One is the winning, one is your original investment or bet. If you put $10 down and you win, then they're going to be putting the $20 on, on it and, and chips, right? And you get your $30 back, 10 is the original investment. And then you could get all three of them to be fours, in which case they pay you three to one. So you have three different ways to win. That's why it looks very uh, enticing. And it also, uh, it also is fairly easy. It's less complex looking than when you look at something like a roulette wheel or craps, even though as we'll see, the odds for them winning there are better than here. But the simplicity of it is kind of nice when you're just sitting there and you want and you just want to roll the dice. And then if you get your number, then you win something, right, is the idea. So in any case, let's take a look at what it looks like. So now I have to analyze these three different things that could happen. So we have to break them down one at a time. First, what are the odds that you get three numbers? All three of them come out. If we bet four, they all three come out to be a four. Now you have three dice. We have a red die. Uh, an orange die and a blue die. What's the chances that they all come out to be a four? Well, our number, which we'll imagine it's a four, has a one out of six chance on the red die uh, to come out. And so what's the chances of that happening? It's gonna be one out of six if we look at it from a percentage. And then of course, the same is true for the orange die. And the same is the true for the blue die. Now, these are all basically independent from each other, even though we're rolling them at the same time. The outcome of the red die should not have any impact on the orange die or the blue die. Same for the orange die versus the red die and the blue die and so on and so forth. So to get all of them, all of them come out to be four, we'd have to multiply these out. So one times one times one is one. And then six times six times six it's going to be 216. So 1 over 216 is this uh, 446.46%, which you can also get to percent wise. So looking at it from decimal standpoint, 0.1667 times 0.1667 times 0.1667 is going to, if I move that decimal two places over, give us that 0.46%, which again is very low odds that we're going to get all three of our number. Let's look at the highest probability thing that's going to happen, that being that we lose, of course. And so what are the odds that we don't get any of our number? We, we have three dice. We bet on a, we bet on a four and uh, none of them come up to be a four. Well, with the red dice, we have five that are not our number out of the six numbers on the dice. So that's, of course, going to be five over six. And then on the orange, it's going to be the same. The blue is going to be the same. 
If we then multiply that out, we've got 5 times 5 times 5, or 5 cubed. That's going to be the 126 over the 6 times 6 times 6, the 216. So the 125 over the 216 gives us about this 57.87, which we can also get to by saying 0.8333 about times 0.8333 times 0.8333 gives us about, if I move the decimal two places over 57.86%. Uh, so notice it's higher than uh, likely over 50% that we lose, which might lead you just from that stat to say, well, this is not a favorable game because it's more likely I'm gonna lose, but that's not necessarily the case. We know it's not gonna be favorable because we're in a casino, but that's not where we can stop because note the payouts are not even. So although I'm more likely to lose, if I get a more favorable payout, if I got two of my number or three of my number. So I have to keep on thinking to get to the expected value to calculate whether or not it be a favorable or unfavorable game. Let's go to the, some of the more complex outcomes. We could say, what are the odds of getting one of your number? All right, to get one of the number, that could happen multiple different ways. We could, the, the red die could be the winner. If that happened, the four came up on the red die, which only happens one out of six chances. That would be the point uh, one six on forever. And then the orange die doesn't come out. So that means that five out of six, it doesn't come out. So that's gonna happen five out of six times. It doesn't come out to be a four. And then the blue die also doesn't come out to be a four. So we had one winner, the other two are our losers. And the odds of that being our outcome would be the one times five times five, 25 over the six times six times six, the 216, which would be the 25 over the 216. It's gonna be the 11.57, which could also be calculated at 0 0.1667 times 0.8333 times 0.8333, about moving the decimal two places over 11.57. Now, of course, the same thing could happen, but this time the red one is not the winner. The blue one is, is the winner. So now we're gonna say the blue one's the winner. That would happen one out of six times. And the orange one is a loser. And the red one is a loser. Both those have an odds of happening. Also, once again, at the five six, we have a symmetrical situation that we saw up here, the 165656, but now we have a 565616, which is going to still add up to 25 over, over 216, which still comes out to the same odds of 11.57. And then finally, of course, we can have the winner being the orange die, which often might be a yellow die, but whatever. Orange die. So it's the 16, and then the red die is a loser, and the blue die is a loser. So we had one six red winner orange uh loser blue loser red loser orange loser blue winner red loser orange winner blue loser symmetrical outcomes once again adding up to the same probability of the 1157 so now i can add those up those three outcomes which is 11.57 plus 11.57 plus 11.57 which gets to that 3472. Uh, okay, so then we can say, all right, then what's the next option that could happen? We could win two times. So we, two of them are winners. Two dice are the winners. And that's when we get paid the two to one, right? So they're gonna say, if, what, could, how, what are the combos? Well, I could have a red die wins. That would be a one six probability, which again is one over six, which would be 0.16. We could have the orange die also win another one six and then the blue die doesn't which would be five six chance because five out of six are, are the non-winners what are the odds that that happens that outcome happens it would be one times one times five over the six times six times six or five over two one six which would be about 2.32 percent so fairly low likelihood which we can also calculate by taking 0.1667 about times 0.1667 about times uh, 0.8333 about gives us about 2.31 if we move the decimal two places over S on a symmetrical scenario we could have the red die wins and the blue die wins 
So we still have 1616, but it's the red blue. And then the orange one is the loser, which is the 56, which is the same calculation because it's a, kind of a symmetrical outcome. And then lastly, we could have the last combo, which means the last two win. Orange wins 1-6, blue wins 1-6, but the red is a loser 5-6 chance for that to happen, which is a symmetrical outcome, giving us the 2.31 if we add those odds up. So we've got this 6.94 plus 6.94 plus 6.94 about... Uh, hold on, what am I doing? We've got the 2.31, let's just say times 3, gives us the 6.94 about... All right, so how can we double check that we got that correct? So we can kind of put our table together now and say, all right, so what are, what, what are my odds of things happening here? We can either get zero of our number, zero fours if we picked a four. We can get one out of the three die to be a four if we picked a four, two out of the three die to be a four if we picked a four, or three of them, all three of them being the four. Uh, in terms of the payout, we're gonna get losing a dollar so it's it's going to be uh, we lose the bet if we if we uh, uh, lose right if it's no fours and if we get one four it's a one to one payout we put the uh, one dollar down they're going to put a dollar on top we win a dollar if it was a ten dollars we win the ten dollars and for uh, the two we get a two to one and so that means if we get two fours, they're gonna pay us $2. We put $1 down, they give us $2. If we put $10 down, they give us $20. And then three to one would of course mean they pay us three. If we put $1 down, they pay us $3 on top of it and, and, and so on. So then what are the odds that we calculated? So we said that the one to one, uh, the zero to lose was 57%. That's what we calculated over here. Uh, to lose uh, 57%. And then we said, okay, what are the odds to get one number? We said that was 34%. The odds to pick up the two numbers was uh, 6.94. And to do all three win, very low likelihood of the 0.46%. And these percents have to add up to the 100%. If they don't add up to 100%, you haven't properly analyzed all of the possible outcomes. So from an accountant perspective, that's like, that's like the balance sheet being in balance right there. We're in balance. So we can calculate then the uh, expected value calculation by just taking then these numbers. We're just going to take the $1 loss times the odds of 0.5787, giving us the negative 5787. One times this is going to be 0.347. The two times that is going to be two times... 0.094 gives us, uh, hold on a second, the 2 times the 0.094 is going to give us, I think I punched it in the calculator wrong, 2 times, 2 times 0.0694, I think I went dyslexic or something on that one, but sorry about that, and then we got this one, and then if we add these up, we come up to the, uh, the I'm going to, 0.5787 negative, so I'll say minus 0.3472 minus the 0.1389 minus the 0.0139 is going to give us a loss. Then the expected value is going to be 0 0.0787. So that means that on average, when you play this game, out of all these calculations finally telling us, we think that we're going to lose on average. 0.0787 of the bet if it was a dollar of a dollar or in other words if it was a dollar bet 7.87 cents now obviously again they probably don't even let you bet a dollar they're going to make you bet five or ten dollars uh as the initial bet but even if they let you bet a dollar then uh you're not gonna you're not gonna lose seven cents you're gonna lose either the dollar or whatever the bet was or you're gonna win uh, one to three dollars on it, right? But over the long run, we would expect on average to lose about seven cents, 7.87 cents. And that's what the casino is betting on because when you have a whole bunch of people playing the game, if they're playing it all the time, they're betting on that long-term outcome, which should be fairly predictable the larger the numbers that we're dealing with, which we can now think about and say, okay, can I calculate that? Can I test that empirically? 
basically running this game like in Excel, which we do do in Excel in another course or section if you want to check that out. But we'll just give you the concept of it here and say, okay, let's think about that and imagine we simulate running this game. We could say, let's say we run it like 500 times and uh, I only did, I didn't do the, all, of the, all of the runnings here, but we're going to imagine that we did it like 500 times, right? And then we're going to say that we had the outcome for the red die, the uh, orange die, and the blue die for each of them. So we're throwing three dies each time. We just gave it a random calculation between one and six. So these are just as though we rolled each of these dies, giving us a random number for each of them, one through six. So the first roll, the red die was a five, the, the orange was a one, and the blue was a five. And then on the second roll, the red was a four, the orange was a two, and the blue was a two, and so on uh, and so forth. Then we want to count for our number. We're going to imagine that our number is a four. So let's just think about w what are the outcomes if we picked a four as our number. We want to count these three numbers. We use the count if formula here, and we're saying, look at those three numbers and tell me if you see a four. This is referencing a four. Uh, so this one didn't have any fours. This one had one four. This one had no fours. One four, one four, one four, one four, so on and so forth. Here's a two four scenario and so on. So those are our counts of fours. So now we want to basically put put the put the count together and say, all right, what happened after 500 spins? So our buckets are going to be zero, one, two, uh, three, uh, and then anything over three, there shouldn't be anything over three. These are the ends of the ranges, meaning I want to see how many, how many uh, rules had z nothing, you know, less than zero to zero. They are whole numbers. So we're just going to hopefully pick up all the ones with a, with a zero, which I could have also done with a frequency formula. It's what we're using here. Uh, we can also have used a count, a count if formula, which we get into more detail if you want to look at it in uh, Excel. So we counted uh, the zeros to have 299, where we had of the three dice. Uh, that's how many times it came out that we didn't get any fours. And then we had 166 times that it gave us then uh, uh, one four out of the three dice. And then 33 times out of 500 to give us two fours out of the three dice. And then only two times did it give us all three of a four. Now, if we add those up, it comes out to 500, 299 plus 166 plus 33 plus 20 plus 2, because we did the simulation 500 times, imagining we sat at that chuckle luck table all that time. And, uh, and, then, and then if we look at the percent, if we got 299 zeros out of the total of 500, uh, what do we call them, rolls, <laughs> that's 59.8. If we did 166 out of out of 500, that's going to give us 33.2 percent of the time that we got that, and then we had uh, 33 out of 500 is going to give us that 6.6 percent .6 of the time, and then finally the two out of 500 is going to give us that 0.4 percent of the time. These percentages adding up to 100. That's our outcome in terms of not total numbers, but percentages. So then uh, we look, if we look at that compared to our odds table that we put out over here, this is the odds table that we put together. Uh, we said the likelihood based on our, our analysis, 57%, 57.8 for a zero, 34 uh, and so on for a one, two and three. Let's compare that to what actually happened. So now we're going to say we thought that about 57.87, we'd ran it 500 times. The difference is pretty close. It's not exact. If you kept running it in Excel, you can keep on shuffling the numbers. And this should be sometimes positive and sometimes negative if we got this number correct, right? That's a way that we can kind of empirically test it to some degree. And then this one, we thought it would be 34.72. And so that's just a difference to what actually happened of pretty small difference looks pretty close to get two numbers correct we thought the odds would be 6.94 it came out actually to be 6.6 .6. so that's pretty close looks like what we would kind of expect and to get this one very low 
only happened, uh, odds are 46%. It only actually happened 0.4%, so that's pretty close. So there are, are those. And then the expected value, what do we expect to happen? Well, we ex said the expected value was that 0 0.0787 in the long run. So, right, that's not what's going to happen in the short run. But if we did it 500 times, we would expect on average to lose that 7.87 cents if we were betting a dollar 500 times, which would be a loss of $39.35, which again, the casino would probably make you bet five or $10 per bet, which means, you know, that, but we'll keep it at that for now. So now we're going to say, okay, if what actually happened, then uh, we can say, here's the, the wins and the losses uh, that we can have. So if we lost completely, we didn't get any fours, that happened 299% of the time, which is the same that we got up here. We also did it in Excel with a count function. So we just went through here and said, give me a count of all the zeros. That's another way that you can get to that same number. And then the payout would be negative one. We're gonna lose the dollar if we bet a dollar, that's gonna give us negative uh, 299. And then how many times did we get a one? That was the uh, 166 times that we saw up here that we got out of 500 spins a one. What's the payout? It's gonna give us a dollar payout. So in those cases, we won a dollar if it was a dollar bet. And then we're saying to get two, we said that happened 33% of the time. We get a payout of $2 when that happens. Therefore, we won $66 when that happened. And to get uh, three numbers in, that are all the same, that only happened two times, but we got a payout of $3. <laughs> so that's a whopping $6 that we got for that big payout, the big money. Uh, and then, so if we add those up, we, we came out to what we had, we had 166 plus 66 plus six minus the 299. We came out to an actual negative after sitting there for 500 spins of the dice, we have a negative, we're down $61, but hopefully we, we got free drinks or whatever, if you're into that and we, they got free, maybe they comped our room, you know, we try to, we try to get some free stuff out of them, at least enough so that we can just hang out there and break even is, <laughs> but, but it's probably going to be more than that because obviously they're going to make us pay uh, $10 per bet, which means you're going to have to get f more free stuff in order to, you know, to break even. Uh, but that's the idea. So there's a difference between what actually happened with the expected value to what we expected to happen of this number after 500 spent or rolls of the dice. And then of course, if we kept shuffling this, you would expect this to be sometimes be positive and sometimes negative. If you want to, if you want much more detailed analysis and just look at the formatting in Excel, we have another course or section on that, but that's, that's the general idea. So what we're doing is we're playing the short run as a player and just saying, Hey, I know I'm going to lose in the long run, but I'm going to, I'm going to in the short run possibly win. And if I do, I leave, right. And then, or I play the long run and I know I'm going to lose, but I'm going to try to get it back with free stuff that I get out of the casino for hanging out there and, and just hanging. Uh, and then, and that's going to be the idea. But if we're in an investment situation, it would be the reverse. We would expect we might lose in the short run, but in the long run, we expect to win because hopefully we're investing in stocks and whatnot that have a favorable long-term uh, odds to us. Okay.